What we understand about domestic, family and sexualized violence informs how we respond. It influences how we design and communicate products, services and systems. It's important we look at our collective and individual actions to understand how people experiencing violence experience our responses. Victim survivors come from all cultures, are all ages and genders. Our watch data indicates that one in five Australian women have experienced sexual violence since the age of 15. And one in four have experienced physical or sexual violence by a current or former intimate partner since age 15. Given this prevalence and diversity, a diversity of responses is also critical. Let's build our understanding of where victim survivors may have connection points and where they may seek support. Here are five key statistics for us to consider. According to the Institute of Health and Welfare, almost half of women who experienced violence from a current partner did not seek advice or support from anyone. For those who did seek support following violence from a current partner, 67% of women sought advice or support from a friend or other family member. This was more than any other source. UN Women estimates that between 55 and 70% of people experiencing domestic and family violence are in the paid workforce. However, we'd misunderstand the vital role of businesses and organisations if we only think of their responses as a workplace. Informed design of products and services can mitigate the ways violence and abuse is perpetrated and can build on safety and options for victim survivors. With rare exceptions, everyone is a customer or client somewhere, using these products and services as part of their day-to-day -day life. For many reasons, people experiencing domestic, family or sexualized violence are not always safe to, or may not choose to, use traditional statutory and specialist services when seeking support. In fact, according to the Institute of Health and Welfare, eight in 10 women who experienced violence from a current partner did not contact the police. Some victims of violence have little choice but to call on statutory or specialist services for support. This may be a step they choose to take or a decision someone else makes for them. Just as businesses don't only have employees, so statutory and specialist domestic and family violence services don't only have clients. They may also have employees who are experiencing violence. Let's take a look at what this data might mean in three examples. Nisha is a customer or client somewhere. She's in the workforce, yet she is not telling anyone about her ex-husband's ongoing use of violence and abuse and how she's protecting herself and her children on a daily basis. So, how do we design for and communicate to the people who are telling no one? What might the experience be like for someone in Nisha's situation if access to information or support is contingent on making contact? Anthony is a customer and client of several businesses and organisations and trying to access products and services that build on his safety. He hasn't told any family or friends about his partner's violence and how he's decided to stay living with him as this is his safest option. He's thinking about talking to a colleague at work. How important is it for every workplace to be ready to respond in any industry and of any size? What might the experience be like for the responding colleague if they're underprepared to respond to people in Anthony's situation? And where can we prevent and mitigate violence and abuse through improved products and services? Eva is in contact with police, although this happened outside of her control. She's a customer of several businesses. She's told a friend some of the details of her boyfriend's abusive behaviour and prefers to talk to her friend more than anyone else. In what ways are we supporting family and friends as the first and possibly only person the victim survivor tells? And what might the experience be like for those family or friends if it's not clear how to access information or support that's relevant to them? Every person's needs and experiences are unique. If and where people seek support can vary significantly and people may disclose different elements of their experiences to different parts of the responding system. So, what other support responses and options are needed or need refining? 
Many victim survivors are weighing up whether to reach out to someone. Rights, respect, equality, access, dignity and safety are all elements contributing to if, how and where a person might reach out for support. If they do reach out, a poor response will reduce the likelihood of them reaching out again and enable people using violence and abuse to continue their actions undetected. Victim survivors notice the quality of responses received by others and what attitudes and assumptions are held by the people and institutions around them. Imagine the difference it would make for victim survivors if all workplaces, businesses, family, friends and specialist and statutory services were informed and ready to respond. There would be less judgement, fewer assumptions and false starts. There would be more nuanced and diverse types of support. Victim survivors would have access to clear information and improved options that might change if and where they choose to talk to someone. Inside Exchange is designed to inform and strengthen social, service and systemic responses to domestic and family violence. Visit insideexchange.net.